Good evening. Good evening. Oh, let's try that again. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to turn this way because this is where our graduates are. No disrespect, but the light needs to shine on these folks this evening. Um, one correction, Dr. Mims, uh, my husband and I have been married next month, 29 years. So I'm proud of that. So I'm going to make a little correction there. Hey. Um, it's an honor to be here with the faculty and the staff and the friends and the family, but especially you graduates over there this evening. Um, many parts of my job can be uh, somewhat tiresome and somewhat painful sometimes in the political world, but this is a part of my job that I truly, truly enjoy. Special, special ceremonial occasions like this. And it's, it's truly an honor to be here with you all this evening. <coughs> When Bob first asked me to come and be the keynote speaker and to speak with everyone this evening, um, I tried to think back when I graduated. I graduated from Georgia State University with my undergraduate in 1982, and then my graduate, my master's in finance in 1988. And I tried to think back, you know, what stuck with me, and I couldn't even remember who the speaker was. So you're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't remember much of what I say this evening. I know that you're ready to get on to your celebrations with your friends and your families and maybe a nice supper together. And um, uh, So uh, I do remember those saying, let's get this over with. So we'll try to be brief. Um, I know that's strange and almost like an oxymoron coming from a politician to be brief. But um, I will try my very best. Um, the main focus is on the celebration of you all receiving your diplomas and your congratulations this evening. Um, I want to share just a few lessons I've learned in my own journey since I have graduated. And I hope that some of this will stay with you as you head into your journey uh, throughout the rest of your life. Um, you probably aren't going to remember who said them, but maybe some, somewhere along the way, maybe some of these ideas or concepts will make a difference in your life. I certainly hope so. But when you venture out after your graduation and you're headed into a new phase of your life, uh, I want you to carry with you three C's. Three C's. It's easy to remember. Change is constant. Character is what matters. And compassion makes all the difference in the world. Um, let's talk about that. Um, we talk about change all the time. And uh, it's really only when you get down the road a little ways that you realize just how much you and the world around you are transformed as you're going about just your daily, normal, routine business. You've invested money and, much more importantly, time and energy into your chosen field of study. And you probably have a pretty good idea of where you're headed next with those studies under your belt. Um, but my own experience tells me you really have no idea what life will bring you. You really don't. So um, I did my undergraduate and graduate degrees with a master's in finance. Both of my degrees were in finance. And I did spend the first part of my career in corporate financial planning and analysis. But before I knew it, I was in marketing. And then before I knew it, I was in sales. <clears throat> I sold everything from electric to toothbrushes to small kitchen, aid, kitchen appliances to Snapple beverages to warehouses. Um, I didn't know that that's what I was going to do when I graduated college, but that's what I did. I worked for Fortune 500 corporations, some of them global in nature. I worked for a dot-com startup. I worked for family businesses. I've been downsized three times in my career. I started my own business after the third downsizing. Mind you, I said that's not going to ever happen to me again. I have to fire my own self. Um, and then somewhere along the way, three years ago, three and a half years ago now, I became mayor of a, a medium-sized town of about 15,000 folks, $120 million a year operating budget, and about 320 employees. And when I left Georgia State in 1982, I wouldn't have dreamed that, that that's where I would be today. When I left in 82, believe it or not, there were no personal computers. They had not been invented yet. I didn't have a personal computer until I was in graduate school. Uh, the computer was a big box. It was just hidden away, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, it was communicated with a teletype machine via some funky little cradle that the phone sat in. Uh, there was no World Wide Web. We have that today. That's revolutionized our entire world. There was no e-commerce, no cell phones, no smartphones, and no tablets. Uh, so it seems everything is changing all the time. 
But beneath it all, there are some things that will never change, and that's going to lead us to our second C, and that's character. That's who you are. In corporate finance and in sales and in marketing and in running my own business and running a city government, the constant that has been is character. You'll be amazed and I hope pleased someday when you look back and you realize how you've grown as a person through all the chapters of your life. But the foundation for your growth today, it's your character. That's your foundation. The stuff you guys have learned in school, the subject matter, the technical expertise, <laughs> skills, they do matter, but they're going to be obsolete in about a year. So you're going to be constantly learning the rest of your life, and it is a great journey to wake up every day and learn something new. But what stays with you for the rest of your life and what makes a difference is the character. It's who you are. Think about character. Do you speak directly and honestly? Do you say what you'll do and then do what you'll say? Doesn't matter if you feel the study, these are important. Do you show up on time with your head in the game and give it your best? We were a little late tonight. I was chastising a little bit back in the, the uh, atrium. Uh, it's important to show up on time and prepare for what awaits you. Do you, do you own up to your own mistakes and not look for others to blame? Do you accept personal responsibility for creating the life you want to have, or do you just find an excuse for having something you don't have? Are you honest with yourself about your strengths and weaknesses? And are you someone that others can count on? I can't stress it enough. The second C is very important. Character is what matters. But along with character comes compassion, our third C. It makes all the difference. It doesn't matter how brilliant you are, or how talented you are, how driven any one of us is, nothing of great consequence has ever, and will ever, be achieved individually. It takes others. It's our ability to work in teams, to learn from others, to develop talent, to inspire, to elevate people who come in contact with our lives. These are, these are what produce the results that matters. It's the compassion in us. Some of you came to Troy University to simply better yourself and make a better life for you and your family in your own little world. And some of you came to college intent on finding a path to changing the world for everyone. But regardless of why you came and where you're headed from here, you will change the world. You'll change it for someone every day in ways you may never ever realize. You'll change it by giving a kind word and a smile when someone really needs it. You'll change it by letting a mentor show you the ropes as another one did for them years before. I'll never forget Charles Lucky. He was my first boss right out of college. And to this day, I, I think I need to call him and just thank him for what he did for me in my life. I thought I knew everything right out of college. I didn't know anything. And he sure taught me the ropes. Um, and I thank you for that to this day. Um, you can change the world by stopping and really listening to someone. It'd be easier to just be swept away in your own concerns, but sometimes it's better to listen. And listen for, in the heart what someone's trying to say to you. By caring as much about the wants and needs of others as you care about your own. Compassion is also about shunning stereotypes you've been told about race and about gender and about social status and political affiliation. And you need to see the true character of the people you're encountering. Ignore the artificial hierarchies of society and corporate structures and truly believe in our nation's creed that all men, all men are created equal. And you need to treat your fellow man as such. By doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. That sounds like a religious statement, and we have learned that in religion, and we are in a religious house today. But it's more fundamental than that. We need to treat others like we want to be treated. So, change is constant. You might as well go on and accept it, saddle up, go and write it on now. Change is going to happen. Never lose the sense of who you are and the importance of your relationships with others. 
all the changes I've seen in my life, my husband and I still send each other out every day with the same little state. We say be nice to people and make good decisions. Simple as that. I have a brother-in-law that thinks that's the hokiest thing in the world. <laughs> and it does sound hokey, but it's true. Be nice to people and make good decisions. So let me just close. I told you I'd be brief. I hope I've kept my promise here. Change is constant. Character is what matters. Compassion makes all the difference. Congratulations on all that you have achieved. I see big smiles out there. Smile, smile. You need to be congratulated. Um, best wishes for your journeys ahead. As you head out, just don't forget to be nice and make good decisions. It's been my honor to be with you this evening. Congratulations to each and every one of you.